Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis of our meditation this morning, the words of Psalm 23, especially these words, The Lord is my shepherd. This is the word of the Lord. Anytime the word Lord appears with small caps, as it does here in this psalm, and as it appears in other places in the Old Testament, it does not designate the usual word Lord, meaning in that case, sir or master, but it references the personal name of God. Moses at the burning bush asks the one speaking to him, if the people you are sending me to when I go to them want to know who is sending me, who are you? What shall I say to them? And the voice from the burning bush spoke and said, tell them I am sent you. I am is our God. That is God's name. He just is. That is what that word I am declares. He didn't have a beginning, nor will he have an end. The God who is our Father, whose Son became incarnate and whose Spirit spoke by the prophets, Israel's God, Yahweh, as we might say it in the Hebrew. So maybe it is better just to say, Yahweh is my shepherd. I have a shepherd and he is the existing one. The one who led the people through the wilderness and got them through the Red Sea. That one is my shepherd. And that is why it says next, I shall not be in want. It is impossible for me to lack anything because my shepherd is not Joe, Bob, or Sally, but Yahweh. Yahweh is my shepherd. With him as my shepherd, how is it that I could lack one thing that I needed? And that gets to the next point, the word my. You may have said this psalm a thousand times or more, but have you noticed that when we think of sheep, we usually think of a flock? A shepherd, as we know, cares for the flock, the group. But this psalm does not say that or indicate that. It does not say that at all. The psalm does not say Yahweh is our shepherd or we all shall not want. While that is true, this psalm does not make that confession but it has an entirely different point in mind. In six verses of Hebrew poetry, that particular confession is made with words like me, my, and I, not, you, us, or we, 17 times. More than God caring for a group, the point is, is, it, is that he cares for me. I have my own personal shepherd, and he is the one who made the stars. Yet how can we believe this? Well, the Bible speaks also this way, not only of our care in this life by the shepherd, but also of our individual creation. God is not like Henry Ford, cranking out mass-produced cars on the assembly line. He is more like Enzo Ferrari, making each part by hand. The Bible compares it to a weaver making a work of art. Instead of using looms, and stretching fabric, God crafts and sews with sinews, his material, sinews, skin, and bone. For Psalm 139 says, For you formed, you individually formed me, my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret. It intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. Yahweh is my shepherd. He is an individual kind of God. Yet what of this individuality? It extends not only to creation, our beginning, but also to our ongoing care. And that is what Psalm 23 is mostly about. He leads me beside still waters and makes me lie down in green pastures. Yet more than plain food and any old water pond, well, that should do. It is good food, green and luscious pasture, 
and water not that is roiling and dangerous and would carry me away down the river, but the waters that he leads me by are quiet and a stilled gurgling brook. He gives the best and crowns my days with goodness. Yet God also cares for me when I falter. When I go my own way, he rescues me. The word restore in that next phrase, he restores my soul, means that word restore means to bring back. Yet the word soul there, he restores my soul, literally means life. Literally, we could say, he returned and gave me back my life. There's much in these words about the shepherd who lifted you on his shoulders, the shoulders of the cross, and brought you back home to him. Born as a sinner, you were not born as one who is under the power of God, but are born as a child of the devil and are under the power and sway of Satan, a different kind of master and Lord. Through the distraction of the cross, Satan, like a ravenous lion, bit on Christ instead, and while not looking, all the sheep in the devil's pasture escaped and went free. Jesus gave his life for your rescue. As a sheep of Satan, the Lord Jesus had pity on you and delivered you into the glorious kingdom of his love. But life in his kingdom as his sheep is more than just choose your own adventure. For life in his pasture involves the path of life. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God wants this path for you. Loving you, he doesn't want you to hurt yourself when you stumble or for you to be injured or die falling off some self-chosen cliff. Choosing your own way, that is, following in your life what makes sense to you rather than what the Word of God says, leads to your destruction of body and soul. And so by His Word, He teaches you how to live. And He leads you by that Word on the righteous right way. Sheep want to live their own way. They seem doggedly determined to do things that lead to their destruction. They think of a freedom that is only slavery, where the slavery they think of is actually the greatest freedom. Like our first parents who thought life with God was pretty constricting, who believed the devil's lie when he said, do it your own way, forge your own path, blaze your own trail, be your authentic you. When we learned that way, we came to realize that when we try to be gods, when we humans try to be gods, we become more like the devil and we become subject and enslaved to his evil lies and way of living. Even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Sheep have to get grass and food. They have to get grass and water as well. But the kind of land that we're talking about here in the Middle East is not like in Pennsylvania where every yard is green. And sometimes in the dry seasons, only the shepherd knows where the green grass is. He must lead and the sheep must trust. Dark caverns, deep ravines, and steep valleys, why it seems he is leading me into dead ends. Where is he leading me? Death seems all around us. Yet even in our life, when we do reach the last road, and when literal death is the only thing ahead of us, And we, like the children of Israel, face behind us the army of the Egyptians, beside us mountains we cannot climb, in front of us a sea we cannot cross. Even then, God will make a way through a river we have never been through, a situation that we have never endured. And though our little heart bleats and would die of fear, Jesus never asks you to take any steps that he has never taken before. In his wounds and in the spear hole in his side, we see and hear him say, Yes, even this path, I've been down before. Follow me. I know the only way out. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The sheep looks ahead and sees the instruments of the shepherd, the tools of his trade by his side. The staff that gently brings the sheep back to the paths of righteousness is first seen. The law of God, when we go astray, bumps us upside our head. 
This, though, is comfort to us. And we regard his discipline as very sweet. He loves us enough to wound us with his words and slay us with his love. He loves us enough to tell us the truth. We have a good shepherd of the greatest sword, not a hireling who is in it for himself. We love his law. We love that law and his wounding. The wounding of that staff is our delight for he desires to bring us back to him. Yet the rod is never used on the sheep. The good shepherd uses it against his foes. Baptism is the rod of God as the invisible watermark is placed upon us, marking us as his own. You mess with these sheep, you mess with me. Our shepherd may look sweet and nice and kind and lovely, but he bludgeons our enemies and stuffs their jaws and jowls with the crook of his cross. The shepherd must do hand-to-hand combat. A hired hand would run and flee at the sight of the teeth of the wolf and the fear of the demons of hell, which do battle against us. The sheep are not valuable to the hireling. Our shepherd has done hand-to-hand combat with the wolf and hell and its demons and its hordes and has the scars of love on his hand and side and the back and the face and the heart to prove it. A rod is of comfort to the sheep because sheep are nearly defenseless. A porcupine has its quills. A skunk has its stink. A doe has her flight. The sheep has only one article of defense. It's woolly, floppy ears. It sticks by the shepherd. It listens to the voice of the shepherd. Stay close to me. We study the word. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. It's not just wandering and straying, you see. It's green grass and comfort. It's not just running from wolves, but my enemies are all around me, and we eat like kings. They hate us, but we feast in the delights of heaven. Even on the night that Jesus would be betrayed, even as he was surrounded by the Jews and all individuals who desired his death, he took, and on that blessed night, took the cup and raised it to heaven, And with a bit of thanks to the Heavenly Father, raised the bread as well and fed his disciples. Our enemies wish our demise, sin, death, and hell. But we eat from the shepherd's table. What sheep would be so well treated to eat and dine in the shepherd's lap? Yet even today his blood is outpoured, his body is broken and given, that his sheep may feast on the wounds and the delights of heavenly gifts given for your forgiveness, given for your life and for your salvation. Our cup flows over richly with the wounds and blood of the one who died for us to make us free. But what is that anointing of the head with oil? What is that referred to? Well, you see, David, a little no-name sheep from Bethlehem, a dusty village in that time, was taken from the pasture and made to be king of Israel. Samuel's horn of oil poured down on his head and upon his face and down to the skirts of his dusty robes. The spirit rushed and fell on him, the Bible says, with the anointing of that holy oil that poured upon his head. And you, a tender sheep, have been anointed by the Holy Spirit. In the waters of baptism, the rich oil of God's abundant blessing has come upon you not just a sheep. You are the shepherd's sheep. You are his. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This may be the most interesting yet. Take for an example a person diagnosed with cancer. Take for an example a child with a congenital disease, a mother who labors daily cooking and cleaning and wiping snot-filled noses. An aged person at a doctor's office where it seems that that's the daily routine, a child preparing for one more test. The common response in our life is this, what's next? In life, one is always looking over their shoulder. The next test or diagnosis, doctor's visit, unmet challenge, 
or rendering of the doctor saying, it's terminal. For the sheep in the dark caverns, they are sure that two things are behind them in the midst of that darkness, the wolf and the bear. One lost step, one weary day of weakness, and I, bear bait, will be. But this sheep confesses in this psalm, with Yahweh at front, the only two things at the rear, following me up, that I have to watch out for, is some more mercy and some extra goodness. The only thing I have to look over my shoulder for is more blessings from the Lord. Yet even when death comes, and even if the cancer diagnosis is terminal, even if the heart gives out or the spouse gives up the ghost, even if I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, a life here, a life above. The Lord is my shepherd. It is impossible for me to lack one good thing. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the peace of God which passes all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ.